Hello, um, welcome to this data, this session on data dictionary on this data management course. And in this session, we will be looking at um, describing what a data dictionary is and also look at a few examples of data dictionaries. And then um, in hopes that this should uh, help us to uh, create simple data dictionaries for the data sets that we have. So what is a data dictionary? Well, this um, a data dictionary is simply a document that gives the context of a data set, and it should therefore contain all the necessary information um, needed for interpreting a data set. So therefore, in a, data, in a data dictionary, it should, for example, contain the names of the variables, the description of the variables used, any format, uh, for the variables, uh, if any, for example, whether the variables are scale or continuous data, and the codes used in a variable and their respective meaning or labels, any units of measurements, the codes for missing values, if any, and the, a description of the relationship between variables, example, in the case of computed variables, any known issues in the data set, and any other information that is needed to understand the data set. So now let us look at a few examples of data dictionaries that um, we can use for different data sets that we may come across with. So um, we have an example here of a data set from a soil management experiment, which contains a number of variables uh, you can see the exp, exp unit, the block, the treatment uh, variable, and other variables um, having different values here that were collected from this experiment. And the data dictionary was prepared for this for this data set. So we uh, the data set has a number of uh, of entries there, and a data dictionary was prepared for this data set which contained some of the information like the metadata here of the place of the experiment, the dates, the researcher name, but also importantly were the names uh, uh, of the variables that were used in the data set and also the variable labels, which described what the variable names meant and the units of measurements and also some of the codes. So uh, you can see that for the variable name, all the variables that were in the data set, the names used in the data set were given here and their descriptions, as you can see, and also all the variables that had some units of measurements uh, that were necessary for measuring those variables were given. And for some variables also which had, which used codes, uh, provide the, the values for these codes were given. For example, in the treatment uh, column, which describes the treatment number, the numbers here were assigned the values. So what do the numbers mean for this column? And so we have, for example, for the number one, it meant the, the treatment improved follow, GL, G plus L, and also improved follow uh, uh, L and improved follow G, et cetera, up to the number eight, um, uh, the treatment number eight. So all these values were given. But in addition to this information, the data manager also thought that it would be important to provide the food plan for this experiment in order for any person that wants to understand better the data set should be able to understand um, how the plan was at the field and how to even analyze that data in the end. So the field plan was provided here and you can see the layout of how the blocks were arranged and how the treatments were assigned in the different um, experimental units um, for in each of those blocks and what the, uh, the treatments meant, for example, the colors and the numbers and also the names of those treatments that were were provided. So all this information was given within this spread, uh, within this Excel spreadsheet. So from the data set, the data dictionary, uh, 
uh, necessary for interpreting the variables um, that were used there and the measurements that were used and also the food plan showing the layout of that experiment. So this is, uh, this is all part of the information that is necessary for describing or interpreting a data set and therefore should be accompanied with any data set so that any person looking at this data can be able to understand, uh, uh, to understand the data set. So now I'll stop sharing and um, invite my colleague Alex, who's going to also share um, uh, with you another example of a data dictionary that could be useful um, for us to, to be aware of. Um, so this is another data set that was recently uh, created as part of one of Stats for SD's projects. Um, so this data set is taken from lots of different um, sets of data collection across multiple different countries in Africa on, lots of, on a few different uh, agricultural research projects. Um, and this data in particular here is um, rather than uh, raw data from uh, or cleaned data from uh, those data collection processes, it's a lot of um, calculated indicators uh, from that data um, to generate a new, this new uh, data set uh, that's like specifically in the project will be used for some multivariate uh, data analysis, so for a specific set of analyses. Um, so on the screen here is the data itself. Um, see, it's not lots of rows, but not too many columns. Um, so you can see that it starts with a few sort of uh, individual variables sort of describing that household or that particular person. And then we have our, all of our indicators. Um, so, so in terms of the data dictionary, what uh, this one does is quite similar to the one we uh, just saw from Nuru is that uh, for each column in this data, we've uh, given it a description to explain what it is that this variable is. So, so the ID, this is the survey ID number from that database. This is our, our primary key, our unique identifier. Um, the submission ID was sort of sort of a secondary one to link directly to the raw data file from uh, Kobo Toolbox. Um, th this is different from our ID number because our ID number came from uh, the database itself as kind of what row number it was put into basically. And then we have a few other ID things to do with the country and their, uh, the district within that country. And as I say, we have these few uh, quite relatively self-explanatory um, variables, so we don't really need to add anything else. So it's um, age and years and age brackets, gender, marital status, kind of just by looking at the data. Because we haven't used code numbers, we've just put it in kind of verbatim as text, we can see what already married is and what widowed is or what male and female are. We haven't used numbers in this case, um, so perhaps doesn't need to be included as much. The primary thing about uh, this data dictionary is, so each of these calculated indicators um, is on a, cat a categorical scale. Um, and they all either go from, uh, they all have either three or four levels, so they go from zero to two or zero to four. Um, so in this data dictionary for each one of these, we uh, go through each of those levels and explain what it that level means. So in the case of this uh, crop index, um, which is sort of uh, largely to do with crop diversity in particular, so we can see that level zero is that they have one crop that covers at least 75% of all of their cultivated area. Regardless of how many different types of crops they grow, if they have one that covers that large amount of their farming operation, then they are deemed to be level zero. Uh, level one is that they don't have any crops that take up that much amount of their space, but they grow between two and five different types of crop. Um, 
And then level two, which is our high level of crop diversity, is that they grow at least uh, five different types of crops, and none of those um, uh, have such a large, uh, almost monopoly of their farming space. Um, and we go through and define these different levels for each of our indices. Some of them are a bit uh, more simpler than others, and some are a bit more complicated. So for example, uh, this crop livestock integration index, this um, kind of, we convert a few questions from the questionnaire into these kind of binary options of zero being no and one equal yes. So zero, they uh, do do, zero, they don't do this, and one, they do this thing. So in this case, it's, do they produce any of their own manure? from their animals. If they don't, it's zero. If it's yes, one. Do they produce any of their own food for their animals? Zero, no, one, yes. Do they use their animals for plowing and tillage purposes at all? Zero, yes. Uh, zero, no, one, yes. And in our, in our case, we um, add those uh, three variables up. So they will get a score of somewhere between zero to three. So zero, they don't use animals for any of those things, free, they use them for all of these things. Um, and so as you can see, there are quite uh, a few, and these vary in definition and what they mean, but they're all explained here in the data dictionary. Um, a second tab that we have here is to uh, define the levels of one specific variable in our case. Um, so because this was quite, as I say, it was quite a large project across lots of countries and lots of different projects. We actually had this data platform, which heavily relied on uses of databases, and that included using database tables to feed into the questionnaire to define uh, what the options were for things like uh, district, as well as quite a few other questions. Um, a result of that is we're using numbers in our survey to define district, at least as the codes. Um, so when we get this out in our data, our district is the ID number rather than the name. Uh, but through linking back through and looking at our database, we can pull out what those codes were. And here is essentially a lookup table for those codes. So for example, uh, this first one here was district number 37 in uh, Ethiopia, as we use the three digit codes here for the country, which are quite stand universally standard, so very easy to look up as well. And if we look look down, uh, we can sort this as we're in Excel, first of all, smallest to largest. Uh, is that right? Yeah, so we can see that uh, this is what uh, di District 37 equates to as, as a location. And you can do that for any of the districts used in our data. I think that covers that. So I'll hand back to the rest of the video for the rest of Nuru's um, presentation. Okay, so um, with the examples that we've just seen, these are provided, uh, you can find these examples in the resources for this section in under module two. So there's the data dictionary example one and data dictionary example two, um, which you can use as templates or can use um, and adapt in, general, in creating your own data dictionaries. So now let us move on to, uh, um, to have uh, an activity here. So under this section in under module two in the course site, you are provided with uh, some files there. And one is the CCAF's household survey questionnaire. And uh, the other one is a uh, CCAF's household level data set and also the code book for, for some of the variables used in that, in that data set. And so these files were from a study conducted in 2013 and a competent data manager then prepared these files for the data archive, and they can be found in the CCAF data archive on Dataverse. So in, um, uh, when you look at these three files, you find that the questionnaire contains the names of the variables 
to be used in the data set, which can also be verified in the given data set if you look at the data, if you compare the variable names in the questionnaire and also in the data set, you'll find that they're the same. And also, uh, Data Manager prepared the code book for some of the variables that were coded later on after the data was collected. So in that, um, or with this given information, let us now look at the files and explore and see what we want to examine, um, what uh, we, we, yeah, we want to examine out of this approach. Okay, so if you look at the CCAF's baseline questionnaire, the baseline household level questionnaire, you find that you'll have some of the names in brackets. For example, here we have the site ID and there are uh, names or codes for it uh, in the brackets provided. And if you scroll down, you have the concept. So you have, they will have a variable for the concept and some of the names in brackets here, having the, uh, the, some, some codes and the values for those codes. And you'll also find, for example, with the interviewer, there's the name here, field code. In the date, we have field day, field month, and field year, having these labels. So these are the names of the variables. If you scroll down, you'll find that for the section of the household respondent, we have the name of the household head, and we have um, an entry there for the head name, the head name one and the head name two for the last name. And the same applies to the respondent where we'll be collecting their, uh, their first names and the second names. And this will be the names of the, of the variables that will be used. And we also have the, the variable name respondent six, that is the sex of respondent, which is given by resp sex and also respirel. And so you'll find that for each of these, um, for each of these questions, there was a respective um, variable name for each of the questions used. And you, if you compare to the data set that we we will just look at here you'll find that these variable names are what will be used, what were used in the, in the data set that, um, that was collected hence for Saturday in this questionnaire. So let us look at the data set and you'll find that, yeah, if you look at the data set, you'll find that we have the variable name site ID, the block ID, the village ID, the household ID, the consent field code, et cetera, et cetera, and all the variables that were provided in the questionnaire. You'll find them here, okay? And also some of the respective codes, for example, we looked at the code concept, which had one and two, and so you'll find here the respective codes uh, that were used in this variable. And also in addition to the, to the data set and the questionnaire, the, risk, the data manager also prepared a code book and it was also provided along with that data set, which in this code book, uh, it provided some of the, of the codes for missing values. For example, here you find that there are some values like negative six, negative eight, and negative nine for the different, uh, with different meanings for, of missing values. And also we have some codes for the yes, no questions. And we had some codes for ethnicity, uh, the, for ethnicity uh, values and also, I mean, ethnicity responses and also the responses on farm animals and fish where there are different codes. So this code book provided the codes for some of the responses, responses that were, uh, were collected for the, for the different questions, for example, in the ethnicity, in the in the ethnicity, and also in farm animals and fish, also source of weather. So, uh, from the given responses that the 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 respondents had given, uh, the data manager gave some codes to those values, and these are necessary for interpreting that 
particular data set. So you can find also the crop codes here. We have many, many codes around 136 codes of crops. So this file on uh, this code book is important for one to be able to understand that data set that has been provided as well. And also have the codes for aspects of farming systems change. And yeah, in about 18, um, 18 different um, codes there. So this information along with the questionnaire, which gave the variable name and also what meant what was meant by that variable name, that is the, the question that was used, and also some of the of the responses and the codes for those responses. And the given data set, one has to have all these three files to be able to understand to understand this, this data set. Okay. So just looking at this data set uh, on its own, one could not be able to analyze or interpret because you might not understand what the different values or the different numbers mean for the different variables. And so we have to have the household questionnaire in place. And also we have to have the code book and also have to have this data set to be able to interpret it. Okay, so now what we want to do as an activity is that given these three files and we uh, I will need you to work in groups of 10. So in your groups and having downloaded these files, um, have a look at them and then give us any advantages and disadvantages of this approach um, of, of providing the information necessary to interpret the data set compared to the type of data dictionaries that we have shown you in this session. So what are the advantages of, um, of what this data manager did and what might be the disadvantages of, this, uh, of what this data manager did in providing this information? So each group um, uh, at the end, I mean, we'll have 15 minutes for discussion. And at the end of the 15 minutes in your groups, each group will provide uh, we'll come back together and you should be able to provide at least three advantages and three disadvantages of this, um, of the, of this approach used by, um, by the CCAF data manager. Okay, so um, that's it and let us get into our groups now. <laughs> 